Do I have embarrassing? Good. <laughs> We're going to go and see Hannah's sister, Hannah's sister's husband and their kid, Jean. They moved to Margate uh, a few weeks ago. No, we're not going in the camper van, no way. All right, well you stay here then. Let me know how that works out. Apparently it's like the place to, place to be these days, all the, like the Londoners are moving to Margate now. It's like the new cool place to go. You ready to go, kiddies? Right, so where we go? Margate? Uh, oh yeah, should I get Mar put Margate in? Lens is amazing. It's a 16 millimeter uh, RF lens. I really like. Oh, I like it. 16. Well, it's they very have wide. The, they have that effect on Tesla. It's, it's not very. Millimeter. It's not very flattering because it, it's got quite a lot of um, warping. Oh, no. But it's. Uh, but it just gets so much information in. I really like it, and it's quite cheap as well. You can get Did them you bring 50 like mil? 200. Yeah, mm, yeah. Because I, I want to take pictures, and 50 mil is the only one I like. I'll spare you the riveting lens chat and use this time to tell you about where we're at right now, because it's becoming a real possibility that we may need to leave Bath in the next year or so. There's several reasons for that, but the main one is the fact that the cost of living has become completely untenable. £5.50 for Lurpak. I don't know why we're not in the streets rioting about that. But the thing is, we don't just want to sit around and complain about it. I mean, we, we want to do that for a bit, but we also want to do something about it. So here's what we've done to try to weather this storm. I launched a new video production company called Portrait Mode recently to try and compensate for the lack of work, but that's taking some time to build traction. Hannah's still making yoga courses. Um, we're working with a Facebook advertising agency to help us expand that. We have our Patreon, which takes off some pressure. We also have uh, Grace and Ashes, which sells print and homeware stuff. That gets a few orders a week, which helps until one of the every delivery drivers steal a print and then wipe out all of our profits. Thanks for that, every. So yeah, like a lot of us right now, we have this huge financial pressure looming over us, which is making us really anxious. And then there's the fact that the weather in the UK is just so bloody horrible 80% of the time. And then there's the fact that Grayson really isn't fitting in at school. And so we're thinking of getting out of here, maybe Italy or Portugal. We're not sure where yet, but we need to decide soon. There seems to be a lot of stigma when talking about this type of thing, but I don't think there should be. A lot of us are in the same boat right now and I don't think we should feel ashamed about it. Life is all ebbs and flows, and we just happen to be in a bit of an ebb. Anyway, yeah, who wants to hear us complain about how far away Margate is? Your sister literally oh, moved to the opposite side of the country to us, didn't she? It's like they wanted to be as far away from us as we possibly could get. Yeah, so we should be there in about another two hours. I'm really thirsty, but I don't want to drink loads of water because then I'm on a motorway for two hours. Yeah. It's a great chat. I think we might go for a sea dip. I don't know though, what's the sea like in Margate? Because it's like, anyway, it's the channel, isn't it? So it's, I don't think it's gonna be, not, no man, that's like the channel water, that's gonna oh. be grim. Yeah, that's not gonna be nice. Our side, we've got the Atlantic. They've got dirty old channel water. <laughs> and I can't actually hate Margate. Oh my God, this is such a mission. Yeah, isn't it? I'm gonna have a go at them when I see them. This is unacceptable. I'm never doing this journey again. It's too far. Too far. Well, we're never going to do this again. To Italy now, because it'll take just as long yeah, for them to get to Italy. <laughs> it genuinely would. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, on with it upwards. So we went to Margate, and we went in the old-fashioned way by road. If you. All right, let's go. Oh, welcome to Margate. It's actually not that shit. Honestly, I don't think it's that shit. I mean, there are bits of it which are grimy and awful, but it's kind of cool in the way that it doesn't know that it's cool, which is the best kind of cool. I reckon it could be heading towards its new golden era, because back in the 18th and 19th century, Margate was actually the place to be seen. People came from all over the UK flocking here for the sandy beaches, amusement parks, dance halls, theatre productions, restaurants, you name it, Margate had it. And then in the mid 20th century came its decline. And that was all because of one very important cultural shift people stopped holidaying in the UK and instead got cheap flights out to the Mediterranean, killing Margate's tourism industry. But now there's a bit of a revival. 
It has a huge emergence of this creative scene with artists and entrepreneurs opening galleries and cafes and shops in the old town. Tracy Emmon even lives here. I actually bumped into her on the beach. I didn't say anything, I was, I was too embarrassed, but she was standing next to me. I think she recognised me. And I never thought I would say this in a million years, but I actually think Margate is quite cool. So that's left me thinking, hang on a minute, we've got these options of maybe going to Portugal or Italy or Margate. Don't be scared, don't be scared. What can I do? Just come and sit with me. You're scared of the little... Scared of the doggy, are you? Oh, oh you didn't so scared, can you? <laughs> he likes you. He likes you. He just jumps up at you because he likes you so much. Rufus is very scared of their dog, called Freddy, who is a, I think it's a Boston Terrier or something like that. Uh, yeah, Rufus is terrified of him, aren't you Rufus? It's a French Bulldog. Oh, sorry, it's a French Bulldog. And he always jumps up at me. Grayson, don't walk on their furniture, that's really Why? Weird. He's got it sandy. Oh, God. Yeah, we're going to go for a swim in the sea in a minute. Everyone's just uh, sort of getting ready now. I've got my shorts on. Oh, Ooh, baby. I asked uh, AI to give me some interesting facts about Margate. Uh, so the first is that it's got a shell grotto. One of Margate's most intriguing attractions is the shell, really grotto, to go to the shell grotto. A subterranean <laughs> passageway discovered in 1835. Among the sights holiday makers will remember, besides that stout woman in the pink bathing costume, is the Margate Grotto. It appears that the grotto was discovered over a hundred years ago. I suppose there was nothing else to do in 1835. You may as well just cover some subterranean passageway in shells. Uh, today we're taking Joe in. We've convinced Joe. A Hannah's sister to uh, to do the dip with us. So this is going to be our first dip, our first dip in the Margate Sea. If you. Uh, Steph, I'm in my pants. Can you wait for me to put Tony, some... people have seen you give birth. It's yeah, fine. It must have been about seven degrees, I reckon, maybe eight degrees. It was good. Feel much better now. Ready to hit the day. Ready to take on Margate. God, that was a dad thing to say, wasn't it? Ready to take on Margate. We only had two nights in Margate, but in that time we got to check out the old town, go for a sea dip, play some sort of weird medieval bowling game. We got to mosey around the Turner Gallery, which was full of modern art that I pretended to understand by telling Hannah that I found the playful use of postmodern asymmetry in the artist's work created a sense of unease that was both intriguing and, dare I say, unsettling. And then Hannah pointed out that I was just staring at somebody asleep in a wheelchair. I may not know a lot about modern art, but Margate does have one of the most incredible pieces of art I've ever seen. So they have this theme park called Dreamland, which sits in front of this absolutely monstrous, brooding, brutalist building block of apartments designed by Russell Diplock, built in 1964. When you view it from a specific angle, the lettering of Dreamland appears to spill over the austere facade of the brutalist structure, creating this unexpected and subversive visual spectacle. This scene essentially becomes a visual metaphor for the internal struggle between the brutal, unrelenting truth of our rigid reality and the promise of our dreams. I'm aware I sound like a pretentious wanker right now, but I just wanted to explain why this objectively ugly building captivates me so much. I had an idea. Somebody once called us insufferable hipster twats and I thought that was quite funny. So we made it into a, into a print. It ended up being one of the best selling prints that we ever sold. So I thought that I would double down on that and I would create some more prints in the same sort of tone, in the same sort of irreverent tone. I came up with one of the ideas actually, I was having a wee uh, a few nights ago and I thought it'd be funny to have a piece of art in front of me saying this. You should ask where they get their meta art from. Okay, so you didn't like that one. Let me try you with another one. There's this thing with middle-aged women where they just tend to love to let everyone know that they, they really enjoy drinking like lots of wine or gin. So I thought I would um, run with that idea, but be a bit more matter-of-fact about it and uh, create this. I bought this piece of art to let people know I like drinking gin. I mean, just go straight to the point. Just go straight to the point. Okay, so you're not feeling that one. Live, laugh, die alone, and then spend an eternity in a celestial vacuum of screaming nothingness. What about this one then? I'm ambivalent about Marmite. I'm gonna make a limited edition run. I'm gonna put them on Grace and Ashes. Links down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, it goes without saying, we're in a cost of living crisis. Only buy one if you can afford one and you think they're decent. I'm gonna start with just one this week and then I may, I'll see how it goes and if they sell out, I'll maybe do another one next week. I think the one I'm gonna do this week, I'm gonna do the gin one. So I'm gonna make about, I think about 20 of these, 20, 30 maybe of these. I bought this piece of art to let people know I like drinking gin. And just so you know, if you think I'm charging too much for them, once you take out tax, once you take out shipping, once you take out Shopify fees, once you take out um, all the, the cost of the, the, the actual materials, paper's expensive these days, everything's expensive, you don't end up with that much money. I'm not being greedy, I promise. Anyway, okay. Uh, anyway, back to the show. I'm gonna get on with the 
with writing these out. This ride here, Helter Skelter, three pounds to climb up there and slide down. This little ride here, that, three pounds for the kids to sit on that and go round a couple of times. It's very expensive. Yeah, so that annoyed me a little bit about it, but everyone's putting their prices up and this is annoying, the annoying thing about this economy right now. It's like everything's just getting more expensive, so they probably have to put the prices up. I don't think there's some greedy fat cats sitting at the top of Dreamland, like rubbing their fist, hands together, cashing in on this. I don't think that. I think it's genuinely a problem with the system right now. And this problem with the system has resulted in one in three adults finding it difficult to afford rent or mortgage repayments. Food prices are rising at the fastest rate in 45 years and nobody knows if or even when it's going to get any better. 11 million adults are saying they feel unable to cope due to the rising costs. Six in ten, that's 59% of UK adults, say the cost of living crisis has resulted in a negative impact on their mental health. If you're feeling any of that stuff right now, if you're feeling the pressure, then just know that you're very much not alone and I promise you that things will get better. Maybe not anytime soon, Soon, but they will eventually and like I always say if in doubt then zoom out and remember we're little more than tiny specks of insignificant dust in a inconceivably vast ever expanding vacuum and nothing we say or do or think matters I don't know if that that probably made it worse actually yeah just ignore that last bit I haven't really vlogged like this for such a long time but I'm really enjoying it I don't know what it is I've just enjoyed capturing so many of these moments over the past a uh, few days it's like it's re-sparked like some sort of re-sparked something in me I think making this I don't know yeah I don't know why or how it's done that but it's good it's good so that was our little trip to Margate huge love to Joe and Steve and Jean for a wonderful couple of days we should hopefully have another video up next Sunday so stay tuned for that and yeah thanks for being here if you could do me a favor and tickle that subscribe button or give that little like button a finger I'll make sure you're my plus one when I get to those pearly gates bye bitches mm -hmm.